carbon concentration in the atmosphere? Uh, 365 parts per million. And what's that? Mean? I'm sorry, 385 parts per million. And what's the danger zone? The danger zone is anything above 350 parts per million. And the original uh, concentration before industrial times was 280 parts per million. Methane is there in the atmosphere that shouldn't be there right now? I'm sorry? How much methane is there in the atmosphere that shouldn't be there right now? Oh, yeah, there's certainly more methane today than, uh, you know, any time in the, <coughs> in the recent past. I mean, by that I mean hundreds of thousands of years. Why is uh, And it is because of the uh, uh, melting of the permafrost, primarily, plus massive animal agriculture. And what, what proportion is coming from animal agriculture and what proportion is coming from the uh, permafrost? Uh, not an easy question to answer, but uh, I would say that the uh, animal, animal agriculture contribution to the carbon content in the atmosphere is, I think, about 20%, rounded off to the nearest zero. And uh, that is maybe 25% more. 20% more than the transportation industry contribution. And uh, most of those from the animal agriculture would be in the form of methane. The permafrost is very hard to gauge because it is very extensive, but uh, it has been uh, released over the previous few years, I suppose, because uh, a lot of visible damage has already been done to the Permafrost, like buildings built on soil on permafrost, are tilting at crazy angles. The trees are tilting over. The forests are called drunken forests. So you know, so the permafrost is certainly melting, and permafrost contains a huge amount of methane. So the per permafrost is melting. It is a very dangerous sign. So what about the oceans? How, what's their pH balance now compared to pre-industrial? Do you know? Uh, the oceans has always been uh, slightly alkaline, I believe, or neutral. However, it is becoming more and more acidic as time goes on. As, as there are more, uh, as there is more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, more carbon dioxide will be absorbed <coughs> by the ocean, and uh, and the uh, carbon dioxide absorbed will turn into weak carbonic acid, and uh, it will. Uh, get the uh, pH value of the oceans down, and that will have enormous global consequences. And what will those consequences be? In terms of biodiversity, I would think that it is very, very damaging to the uh, corals, for example, any organism that uh, has a hard set shell. The hard shell is usually made by, by and large carbon, uh, calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate thrives in a, in a uh, uh, slightly alkaline environment. If it, is, if it turns into being acidic, first of all, the calcium carbonate have a hard time forming, and secondly, the already existing ca calcium carbonate will dissolve. Water. So uh, the, these organisms cannot form shells, and therefore they cannot survive. So then what happens? Well... What will happen to the rest of the uh, ocean ecosystem? Well, let me give you one example of what happened in the past. Where we, where we could talk about projections based upon computer models, but something very really solid that happened in the past was past mass extinctions, and uh, there had been five major ones so far. We're in the middle, we're in the beginning, uh, sort of uh, in the near the beginning of a major, huge sixth mass extinction, the likes of which we haven't seen yet today. And uh, 
of the past five mass extinctions, at least four had something to do with climate change. And a third of the five was especially uh, proven to be almost exclusively due to climate change. And that was, was very severe. It wiped out 75% of all land species and 95% of all marine species. So, uh, if we produce similar to maybe even a greater mass extinction than anything in the past, because anything in the past was due to natural causes, and uh, today it could be natural causes plus human causes. So, it is possibly and potentially uh, even worse than the third one. And the oceans, as I mentioned, the third mass extinction wiped out 95% of all the Earth species. Therefore, uh, of all Earth's marine species, including all the uh, invertebrates that had to live with the shell. So all the corals were wiped out and uh, the bivalves were heavily damaged. And the corals had to, uh, the uh, coral had to re-evolve basically uh, taking about 10 at least 10 million years to re-evolve so it's a huge damage in the meantime for 10, 10 million years of no coral and uh, the microorganisms would be heavily damaged too by acidity as well as by the temperature changes and uh, the plankton would be heavily damaged by temperature fluctuations as well as uh, acidity changes and that is the base of the food chain in the marine environment and if the plankton were heavily damaged then the uh, uh, organisms on higher bent, uh, <coughs> excuse me, benthic levels will be likewise uh, affected. So it works all the way up to the top of the food chain which would be, I would think, the marine mammals and the largest of all fish species. So it's all, all in the open and uh, I mean, we're present, presenting them with a radically new environment to adapt to, and a lot of them will not be able to adapt to, adapt to the new environment, at least not quick enough, and they will become extinct. And we're talking about if we equal the third one, then uh, we will experience approximately 10 degrees Celsius temperature rise, 16 degrees Fahrenheit temperature rise, and uh, so, uh, you know, it would be a, f a very huge magnitude mass extinction we're heading into, and that could wipe out about 85% of all, of all species on Earth, including perhaps our own. And what about the Amazon? Well, the Amazon, of course, will be one of the major 